<sighs> I've got some dead RAM, so let's take a look at what happened and how I troubleshooted, troubleshot, either way, the issue and determined it was the RAM that was causing problems. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. So recently, I started running benchmarks on the GTX 1050 to kind of get a retrospective look on the issue and how it holds up for today's games. And you can actually check out the results of that video uh, up in the upper right corner. But anyways, getting back to the issue at hand, some of the benchmarks were actually crashing randomly. Like GTA 5 was kind of crashing in the middle of the benchmark with some vague resource and valid error. And some quick Googling ended up suggesting it might be an issue with my RAM. But some further testing, uh, I ended up with like Borderlands 3 also crashing uh, consistently while it was starting up and optimizing shaders. But at that point, I was already super annoyed, so I just ended up not Googling it and moving on to the troubleshooting phase. So at first, I tried a few easy things like checking for updates, rebooting, of course, uh, reinstalling the games and checking the game integrity, te checking the game file integrity with Steam's tools or whatever. Um, unfortunately, that didn't produce any results, but I just tried the easy things at first where you can just kick them off and grab a cup of coffee while they run. Since, unfortunately, none of the easy troubleshooting tasks worked, I then moved on to thinking that it was potentially an issue with my hardware, and due to the googling of the GTA 5 error, I was already suspecting an issue with my RAM. So I then downloaded a program called Memtest86, which basically what it does in its default configuration is throw a bunch of different scenarios at every single address on your RAM, and then checks it to see if it returned the same value that was stored. After downloading and writing the disk image to a flash drive, which thankfully they do provide a helpful little tool to do that for you, I then plugged my flash drive into my test bench and then booted from the flash drive. At first, it will gather system information for like a hot minute or two, and then you'll be presented with a splash screen where you can either exit, change the configuration, or if you wait for like 10-15 seconds, it will automatically run tests with a default configuration. But here I'm going to press C to go to the configuration and show you around a little bit. So at first you get presented with the system information that it collected, but on the left you can see some tabs where you can change the tests to run, the address ranges to hit, all that kind of stuff. And while you can change the tests to run, if you have an idea of what might be causing the issue, I'm going to stick with running all the tests by default to show you what it does in default configuration. So I press S to start and now it's running all the tests. By default it's going to run all 13 tests with 4 passes each. And we're actually not going to see errors here because this is the brand new RAM that doesn't have any errors. And I've already run through all the tests uh, with four or five passes before and didn't show any errors. In total, for me, it takes about three hours to run through all tests with four passes. But you can cut the tests off early if you already have an idea of what the issue is. Okay, so I'm running the tests again with the known bad RAM. And you may not see errors immediately. We did here but eventually you'll see lots of errors crop up if the RAM is bad. In an effort to see if it was just the single stick of RAM or a DIMM slot possibly being the issue, I tried each stick of RAM in three different slots. My board does have four slots, but one's being blocked by the CPU cooler, so I ruled that one out. And what I noticed was one stick of RAM showed lots of errors in all three slots, and the other only showed like four to six errors in all three slots. So what does this all tell me? How did I determine that it was the RAM and not something else like the CPU or the motherboard causing issues? Well, I knew there was at least some issue with something, just due to the fact that Memtest 86 was showing lots of errors with both sticks of RAM in there on the initial test run. If I recall correctly, only showing a few errors across all the tests may be normal and not really cause for concern, and may even be due to an XMP overclock that you need to dial back but many thousands of problems over all the tests is definitely a problem. Next, when I tried the first stick in three slots and got tons of errors, that meant that it wasn't a single DIMM slot issue and was either the RAM that I was using, the motherboard, or the CPU, or something else. That test right there basically just rolled out the DIMM slot being the issue. Next, when I tried the other stick in all three slots and only got like four to six errors in each, that meant that since the only variable that I changed was the stick of RAM between those two sets of tests, means that the first stick of RAM was definitely causing the issues. That being said, it didn't fully rule out another component like the motherboard or the CPU having an issue, since I did still get at least four errors in with both sticks of RAM in. 
but the RAM was definitely my main concern at this point. So I did the RMA. I have both sets of RAM right now, which is why I was able to easily make this video showing both the failing RAM and the good RAM. And honestly, I'm just happy that I have a functioning system right now. Like I said, I've already run the full suite of tests with the full duration on the new set of RAM and got no errors. And just diagnosing and solving these issues, it's just, it's just beautiful, you know? It's fun. Anyways, that's it for this one, and I hope you liked it. This was a bit different from my usual content in that it wasn't really planned and just kind of happened because, you know, I had some dead RAM, but I figured it was kind of neat to show the troubleshooting process and may even help you out in the future if you have some issues with your hardware. As always, don't forget to like the video if you liked it, subscribe to my channel, and be sure to leave a comment below if you think I should or should not do more of these hardware troubleshooting type videos. Oh, and also check out the videos below if they seem to pique your interest. Either way, I will catch you in the next one.